Now to start out, uh, what I've done is I've opened up the classic level with the two chairs in the table, and I've gone ahead and actually duplicated the uh, material on the chair and created a different one called M chair optimized, and I've applied that to the chair on the right. Now that's just so we can see the difference in the two once I start optimizing. So if I go ahead and go into this M chair optimized material that I've duped, uh, right now it's the exact same as the original, right? It hasn't been changed at all. Um, and you can see that it's a fairly simple material. It's just taking in a uh, texture mask where it's got a different texture for the red, the green, the blue. And it's just using those to drive the colors as well as a little bit of the roughness and metallic. And then you have a simple normal map. Now, as it stands, this is a pretty cheap material, fairly simple. Um, so we're just using it as an example. In an actual production, you're going to have more complex uh, materials and assets uh, where this trick is going to be more viable, but this works for a just quick uh, showcase. So to start out, I'm going to just dive into this texture. And actually, I'm just going to go from here. Uh, so this is the mask texture that's driving all of the data for that material. And as you can see, we have uh, a red, a green, and a blue, right? So these are just kind of driving the masks. Now, one thing that they have on here is an alpha, and they're not actually using it inside of the material. You can see that the alpha isn't uh, hooked up. However, uh, that's, that's really not great in the sense that alphas come with some hidden costs. So for instance, uh, with the alpha on here, if I come over, you can see that it's a 2K texture, so it's 2048 by 2048, so not too large. And then the resource size right here underneath that is about 5,500 kilobytes. So very small in this case, because it's just a 2K texture. Um, but let's say I went ahead and came down to compression here in the details, and I compress without alpha, which is going to remove that alpha channel and make it just a standard texture. So you can see that the alpha channel is now gone, right? I can't toggle it anymore. But you can see that our resource size actually got cut in half. So this texture is now half the size that it was previously. Now, the reason for that is uh, as soon as you bake in an alpha, they have to compress it differently. And because of that, it tends to double the size of your textures in terms of uh, their size on disk, not necessarily their size in pixels. Now, that's fine and all. Uh, we're not using that set, right? We've already kind of optimized this. So, you know, uh, if I come over here, um, we weren't using that anyway. So now I've just kind of cut the size of this texture in half. Great. Uh, the problem is, what if you wanted that alpha channel for something, right? Uh, if somebody else was making a different version of this chair, for instance, and they wanted to do something with that alpha, or they wanted to use this material for something else, and that alpha would have been uh, handy to have, right? Uh, now it's gone, right? Uh, we'd have to toggle it back on to get it back. Uh, so how can we get that back without just re-adding it? Because if we just, let's say, kept that alpha there, it's going to keep this texture a lot larger. And if we added the alpha let down here, let's say as a separate texture, it's going to be the exact same because it's also going to be probably the same size as this. So that 2,700 kilobytes. So we really haven't, uh, you know, made any progress there. Now, if you are curious about alpha channels and all the hidden costs associated with them, I do have another video I recently uploaded going into a lot of detail on why you may not want to use alpha channels and kind of some of the hidden costs. So if you're curious about that, I'm going to go ahead and put a card on the screen now. So you can click that to go over to that video. And with that, let's continue. Uh, so we really want to keep that alpha channel, right? But we don't uh, want to put it in the alpha of this and we don't want to have a separate texture. So where can we put it? Well, the answer is we can actually store it inside of our normal map. Now that's going to sound a little weird if you've never done it before, but uh, in essence, when it comes to normal maps, let me uh, go over this normal map real quick. Uh, when it comes to normal maps, uh, you have the red, you have the green, and you have the blue, right? Now, one thing a lot of people don't know is when it comes to normal maps is that the blue channel is actually derived from the red and the green channel, right? So you can see that this is the normal map that comes with the project, and it's set to normal map over here in the compression settings, and the normal map actually gets rid of the uh, blue channel, right? The blue channel is not toggleable. It just has the red and the green, and that's to save texture memory, right? So uh, the normal map is about uh, 5,000, right? Uh, 5,500 roughly uh, for just this red and green, and you get a nice crispy normal map. And the reason why is because the engine is taking the red and the green and actually calculating the blue from them dynamically. Now, the cool thing here is if we wanted to, we could actually pack a texture in that blue channel and then we can do this calculation of the red and the green by ourselves inside of the material 
allowing us to get another texture in here for the exact same resource size of 5,500. So I've gone ahead and made the texture. So here it is. Uh, so I just took the normal map and I exported it from the engine. And then what I did is I took the alpha channel uh, from the mask here. So uh, this guy, if I turn these off. So I took this alpha channel out in Photoshop and then I baked it into the blue channel of the uh, normal map. And you can see that our total resource size right now is actually 2,700 kilobytes. So it's half the size of the normal map and we have our alpha in there as well. So we've dramatically reduced our memory usage. Now, the one thing to note is if you do this, you need to set it to masks, right? Because we're going to be using this as a mask. If you set it to a normal map, what it's going to do is it's just going to disregard that blue channel entirely and just treat it like a regular normal map and just calculate it from the red and green, and you won't be able to actually use that mask. You can also see that it's a little bit more expensive, so we're going to set it to masks just so we can take advantage of this. Now, how do you actually derive the blue channel from the red and green in your material? So let's go ahead and uh, delete this existing normal map. And I'm just going to drag in our new one here, which is our normal plus alpha. And what we can do is we can actually drag off of the red or the RGB. I'm just going to turn this on just so we have a better visualization here. So we can drag off of the RGB. Then we can go ahead and do a component mask. Now the component mask just allows you to mask out specific channels on a texture. So if you just wanted let's say the red channel, uh, or you just wanted the blue, rather than having to drag off of multiple, this will just grab uh, one or all or two, uh, which just keeps things, a little, keeps things a little bit more clean. So all we have to do is we have to grab the red and the green because we don't want the blue in this case because that's the alpha. And then all we have to do is drag off of here and we can derive normal Z, right? And this is just gonna derive the Z direction or the blue channel uh, from the red and the green. So we're essentially doing exactly what Unreal is doing here. We're just doing it inside of the material, right? We can now plug that in. All right, so we should have our normal now. So if I just go ahead and save this, right? So we're gonna have this M chair optimized with this normal setup versus the standard setup. And you can see that if we actually come in here, the chairs look pretty much identical, right? We haven't actually changed them at all yet. This one over here is making use of the original normal map, which has it just, you know, with the standard setup. And then you can see our M chair optimized here looks absolutely identical. So that normal is working just fine. And if we want to preview that, we can actually come over to this normal, uh, drive normal Z, and we can right click and we can start previewing the node. And this will just preview the material over here just straight from that. So you can see that our normal map is working great. All right. Now, one thing you may have to do, um, depending on how your normal map was set up, uh, normal maps inside of Unreal Engine aren't uh, necessarily equal in the sense that uh, normal maps uh, need to be normalized to a specific range. And Unreal accepts non-normalized normal maps. So you can, depending on where you get your normal map from or how it was exported, they can have slightly different normalizations and because of that, this derived normal Z may have different results. So in this case, uh, it's working okay. We could normalize this a little bit, but I think I'm gonna leave that for another video just to uh, go into a bit more depth on it. But just know, depending on where you get your normal maps or how they're exported, you may see varying results where it doesn't look exactly like your previous normal map where it was just the regular one. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the next thing we can show is uh, how to use this blue channel and that's very simple. We can just go ahead and make this a masked material real quick since this is an alpha channel and I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into our opacity mask and watch that update and you can see that this is working as intended. So now uh, just to recap here, we have gone ahead and removed. I'm going to just re-remove this actually um, just so it's not there. We've gone ahead and removed the alpha from this texture, right? Cutting its size in half. And then we've baked it into the normal. And in this material, or this texture rather, 
uh, compared to the other normal. The previous normal, if we just uh, make this, uh, I'm not gonna do that just cause it'll break our material. But if we were to switch this back to normal compression, it would be 5,500 kilobytes, but we're actually getting it for uh, 2,700. So between this one and this one, we're saving about uh, 5,500 kilobytes. Now, not a lot, honestly, that's a pretty small amount, uh, but this is just one set of textures, one material, and it's only 2048. If you were to think about a large project, let's say a AAA game or something where they have a character that has 12 materials on it and your average material has five or six textures and each texture is 4K, and let's say you have dozens of characters across your project, not to mention environments, uh, landscapes, uh, foliage, uh, UI, all these different things, you could see where a simple trick like this across a large project like that could result in hundreds of megs of saved texture memory that you don't have to worry about when trying to port to something like uh, Nintendo Switch or a console, something like that, where you have much lower uh, texture memory uh, in terms of uh, just the amount that you have to work with. Uh, sorry, I kind of blundered that. Uh, but you have uh, tighter constraints, essentially. This is a good way to prepare for something like that ahead of time and save yourself a lot of headaches. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead, give me a like, uh, comment, and I will be posting more in the future. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see those right away. And don't forget to check out that alpha channel video uh, to get a little bit more info on how to do something like this. And with that, uh, have a nice day.